Plants hear pollinators buzzing and react with increased the production of nectar. When pollinators visit flowers, they make different characteristic sounds. In new research, researchers suggest that this buzzing affects the plants and it makes them modify their behavior and increase the production of nectar. The world of plants usually it is considered quiet, but scientists know that they can emit and receive the acoustic signals. The sounds recorded by the plants can be really weak, compared to other vibrations that accompany the lives of insects. The case tinting wings during hovering, landing or take off these are characteristic sounds issued by pollinators, but they were mostly overlooked by researchers. In a recent study by Francesca Barbero from the University of the University Turin and her colleagues an interdisciplinary blend of entomologists, sound engineers, and plant physiologists from Spain and Australia studied signals to develop a non-invasive method of community monitoring polliners and their impact on plant biology and ecology. In one experiment, the researchers recreated the recordings bubble bees near the plants of the larch, anturinum, to monitor the reactions of flowers. They found that bee sounds that are efficient polliners, led to an increase in sugar production and nectar in plants and even to change the expression of genes that regulate transport sugars and the production of nectar. The researchers presented the results of their studies during 188. Congress of the American Acoustic Society and 25. International The Acoustic Congress was held together in New Orleans. Barbero admitted that scientists have concentrated so far primarily on the research of CO evolution of plants and pollinators by evaluation visual and olfactory signals. There is a growing number of evidence that both insects and plants can sense and produce signals vibroacoustic the researcher explained. The research she conducted provided the next ones. Experiments with Rodanthidium buckets and B. sticticum, called red macaques, clearly shows that plants they hear their pollinators and provide them with more food. This shows that plants are a more active partner in symbiotic relationships with pollinators than previously thought. This behavior can be a survival strategy that it favors giving nectar and sugar to bees instead of other insects that do not they offer plants no reproductive benefits. Ability to distinguish approaching pollinators on the basis of their characteristic vibroacoustic signals may be adaptive strategy for plants. Responding to the correct vibroacoustic signal, for example, an efficient pollinator, plants could improve their success reproductive, Barbero admitted. According to these studies and many others, sounds can influencing plant reactions, but it is not entirely clear whether the sounds emitted by plants, they can also affect the behavior of insects. I don't know, whether, for example, plants can attract the right pollinator with the acoustic signals. Our hypothesis is that changes in nectars we have observed after treating the plants with the sounds of the best polliners, increase the attractiveness for this particular species, she said. Barbero, but admitted at the same time that further is needed to confirm this studies to assess how different nectar concentrations attract different species. If this reaction of insects is confirmed, the sounds can be used to influence economically relevant crops and increase them the attractiveness for pollinators assessed Barbero. Scientists are not yet sure how plants can listening to the surroundings. They can rely on mechanoreceptors, cells that they respond to mechanical stimulation, such as touch, pressure, or vibration. Plants have no brain but they can sense the environment and react accordingly she has admitted Barbero. The team is currently conducting analyses comparing valinal reactions with reactions of pollinators and other insects. A multitude of ways in which plants can perceive both biotic factors such as useful and harmful insects, 
and how abiotic signals such as temperature, drought, and wind in your own it's really amazing in the environment, Barbero said. The moment of heart formation captured on video. Scientists have registered on video like cells in the bud the mice begin to spontaneously organize and form the heart. Made in the, the findings provide a new look at the mechanisms involved in heart formation and can revolutionize the way they are treated congenital heart defects that affect almost 1 in 100 children. Images of heart formation have been captured again the first. Researchers from University College London, UCL, and Francis Crick Institute in their work used the light sheet microscopy technique which relies on scanning the sample with a thin layer of light, creating sharp, detailed, three-dimensional images of living tissue without damaging it. Thanks to this, they succeeded track how mouse embryo cells begin in two days you specialize, divide, and arrange the heart. Results and description of the research appeared in the journal The Embo The Journal. For the first time we could observe the cells so thoroughly hearts, during the development of mammals, for so long, said Dr. Kenzo. Ivanovich from University College London's. First we had to grow embryos in a dish for a few hours to a few days, and what we discovered was completely unexpected, he added. First, the researchers marked the cells of the heart muscle, called cardiomyocytes, using fluorescent markers. Then they registered their images every two minutes for 40 hours. It's in combination with advanced imaging techniques allowed to create a detailed, three-dimensional a time-lapse movie. The resulting material showed in unprecedented resolution, how cells move, divide and form a vibrant, beating heart of mice. Everyone and everyone the glowing cardiomyocyte could then be traced back to the previous one's cells that allowed scientists to create something like a tree genealogical cells that helped them see exactly when and where the first cardiomyocytes appeared in the bud. At the earliest stages, embryonic cells were multipotential, i.e. capable of transforming into different types of cells. They included not only heart cells, but also others, such as cells endocardium, a type of cells padding up the inner surfaces of the vessels bloody and ventricles of the heart. Scientists have discovered that earlier, usually in the first four to five hours after the first cellular division, the cells that make up the heart appears quickly and behaves in a highly organized way, almost as if they know where they are going and what role they will play whether they will create the ventricles of the heart or his vestibules. Our findings show that determining destiny heart cells and their targeted movement can be regulated much earlier in the development of the embryo, as suggested by the current models. It changes our understanding the development of the heart and shows that what appears to be chaotic cell migration, it is actually regulated by the hidden patterns that they provide proper formation of the heart explained Ivanovich. We are currently working on understanding the signals that coordinate this complex choreography of cell movements during early development the heart. The heart does not come from a single group of cells, formation from a coalition separate groups of cells that appear at different times and places, she said. Shema a booker of UCL. These findings shed new light on the mechanisms involved in the formation of the heart and can revolutionize the way they are treated congenital heart defects. These studies may also speed up heart tissue cultures in the laboratory for use in regenerative medicine.
Pas de soleil, pas de soleil, pas de soleil. 